Today I get to sit down with the amazing writer, Sarah Kuhn. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Hi. I love your dress. Thank you. For those of you who can't see, we should get a close-up on that. <laughs> it's a sushi dress. Yes. It's the most amazing dress it's I've ever seen in my dress. life. So, where did you get that? <laughs> um, I got it at a place in Burbank called Audrey K. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just did a promo, promo mm -hmm. for Audrey K. <laughs> But it's super cute. How Thank are you? you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Because you are officially, ha you officially have your book published. Yes. Which is incredible. Yes. And that's why I wanted to sit down and <laughs> ask you all the things about that journey mm -hmm. and how, where it's going to go and everything like that. So um, can you kind of fill us in on, on the book and the story? Sure. Um, it is called Heroin Complex, okay. and it's the first in a series about Asian American superheroines. Um, the first book is, uh, it's kind of like The Devil Wears Prada, but with superheroes, it's about a oh girl. <laughs> is that a girl who is like me, half Japanese, and she's personal assistant to San Francisco's most fabulous superheroine. Okay. Um, so she's openly a heroine. Like she's yeah, she's her. openly a heroine. Um, they are also childhood best friends. Okay. And um, the main character, whose name is Evie, uh, throughout the book sort of has to go from being a sidekick to being a heroine in her own right. So the sidekick takes the main stage mm -hmm. and she has to be come into her own. I love it. Yes. That's awesome. Thank you. How long did it take for you to, like, when did the idea first come to you to have this story? Um, it was a while ago. I mean, I would say maybe 2011, 2010, 2011. Um, okay. But I'm a big fan of superheroes. I'm a big comic book geek. I grew up reading them. And I'm also a fan of urban fantasy, which is um, a genre in fiction which is basically, um, it's usually our world, but there's magic around the corner or demons or something. Yeah. And a lot of urban fantasy protagonists are also superheroines in their own right. They're usually um, badasses who wear a lot of leather pants and oh, okay. fight demons. And I like that. Could be you, I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, well, that you know. could be your next role, but um, I was always with both uh, the, the you know the badass demon hunters and the superheroes. I was always curious about um, you know they make all these messes and there's not a lot about who cleans up after them. So mm -hmm. you know if you're a fabulous demon hunter and you have fabulous leather pants, what happens when those pants get messed up? A little by rip <laughs> demon or like... demon schmutz. <laughs> Yeah. Schmutz on it. So, um, who cleans that who, schmutz? Who cleans it up? So I wanted to write about the person who cleans it up. That's amazing. Oh my god, mm -hmm. I love it. And it's funny because I I'm big on movies, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I don't I haven't read that particular genre mm -hmm. that much. So I think it's amazing that I don't know. I mean, knowing you personally and just hearing about the story, I'm totally. I'm ready to read it whenever I can get my hands on a copy. <laughs> Good. Um, so it took you five years to go from like idea mm -hmm. to now it being in your hands, right? Yeah, now. yeah. A load of this because yeah. this is incredible. Hold it, hold it up. Who did the artwork? I mean, um, this is by an amazing artist named Jason Chan. Um, he is awesome. If you just Google him, you will find all sorts of fantasy art goodness. And he, uh, he painted this. Um, and I love it because um, you can tell from looking at it that um, he did read the book. <laughs> you can tell that he, uh, this is actually kind of the opening scene where they're fighting these demonic cupcakes. That's what those are. Demonic cupcakes. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> and um, and uh, I like that um, he really, uh, he, he conveyed the two characters' uh, personalities, I feel like. Yeah. And also... Um, I think they, they both look Asian American and they also look like different kinds of Asian American. Yeah, they which do. Which is usually not a distinction you get. Um, so. That is so cool. Yeah. So, I mean, so for you, you it's set in San Francisco, mm -hmm. you said, and it's, and it, were, were these characters based on people you know? Obviously, like you want, you put yourself into the story. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, we won't have to reveal yeah. who you don't want to. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think um, uh, both of the main characters have elements of myself. Um, you know, Evie is a character who I always said uh, is just sort of defiantly not living up to her potential. She's comfortable being on the sidelines, she's mm -hmm. comfortable being a sidekick. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, that is how I was for a lot of my life. And then Aveda, who is the superheroine she assists, 
um, is very obsessed with perfection. Gotcha. Um, and I think uh, a lot of us Asian American ladies can relate to that. A little, <laughs> sometimes. Just a little bit. But then you reach that age where, and I think this, these stories and these movies and conversations really help drive that message home that perfection is a unattainable and be like well, who cares yes really you know yes. and i think that's such a great message mm -hmm. to send to young ladies so yeah I'm trying to show and them that too. yeah that you know yeah. you, a lot of you can you, a lot of people can be heroines you can all be heroines that's, that's awesome what i'm trying to say yes is this your first published book um, yeah, this is my debut novel. I uh, prior to this, um, I wrote a novella actually that was serialized online. It's called One Con Glory. You can get it as a collected edition, uh -huh. um, and that was something I just put together with my friends, and that was actually what got me a little bit of attention in the beginning, and sort of helped me get to this point. So. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, this is this such a cliche question, but I'm genuinely curious. And it's just something very relatable for the Asian American audience. But how did your parents feel about <laughs> this? You know, I'm just I'm putting myself in your shoes. If I was, because I went through the whole I want to work in media yeah. entertainment thing, and non even nonprofit was mm -hmm. like, right? Not okay. How are you going to make money? <laughs> right. But um, and if I were to tell my parents, hey, I want to be a writer, I want to yeah. be a novelist. I mean, there's a number of responses I could have gotten. How right. how was that for you? Well, um, I grew up with the sort of classic Asian American mom, a little bit okay. of a tiger mom. Um, she actually passed away when I was just out of college, so really, there's never like a good way to say that, but yeah. I'm totally okay, everything's fine. Um, but um, she was definitely of the mindset that I needed to do something practical, mm -hmm. and um, which is not really so much writing. <laughs> but um, the thing that I sort of keyed into when I was younger is uh, this a group of friends and I started this little magazine like at our middle school like it was stapled together oh my god you know, old school it. zine style and it only covered the things we were interested in so it was like the latest babysitters club book yes. um like who who liked who in our friend group like who the best new kid on the block was like it only covered very specific topics yeah um and that's kind of how I started writing a lot and then someone told me um a job you can have where you get to actually write every day is journalism. Uh -huh. um, so I got into journalism because it was actually a job where you made a, a living and got right, like yeah. dental insurance. <laughs> um, and I felt like it was what something. Thought? I felt like it was something I could tell my mom like, this is what I'm doing and it's a real job and yes, it's writing, but you don't have to worry about me. Yeah, yeah, well, good for you. I feel like you just. That's such a great, I love those anecdotes of where it all started, <laughs> because you basically yeah. had your own, like, mini Huffington Post, right? Yeah. Like mini yes. Refinery29, yeah. I don't know, well, like all sorts yeah. of things. Yeah, it was right. back before the, the internet was kind of the force that it is now, so yeah. you had to be a little pen more, a little more pen and paper. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, so tips, or like, do you have tips, or do you have any, like, special special ways that you focus? Because I imagine with a creative mind, some, t some challenges can be... Getting in that zone, because you probably yeah. have like a million ideas. Do you have any processes or? Um, yes. Well, actually, um, the one that I talk about a lot is I'm part of a writing group um, called The Shamers. And it's oh. a writing group here in L.A. And um, basically, we get together in coffee shops and we shame each other into working. Um, <laughs> and it's very effective. <laughs> Um, I can see How does the, that go? Well, you know, I feel like I feel like we're all we're not working necessarily working on the same thing, but since we're working next to each other, they can see my screen. They know if I'm working or if I'm just checking Twitter all day. Mm -hmm. um, so it just it, it just helps get in that sort of work yeah. mindset. Accountability. Like. Accountability. And then we kind of have like, you know, we have ongoing email chains, we talk about each other's work, and I help like or sorry. I feel like um, it just keeps us all productive. Yeah. And Shamers is a funny name. I mean, <laughs> it would be like the accountability or Yeah. No, not it's such a I feel like um, I feel like writers are very big on shame. Like for some reason, just the you know, I guess we all feel 
shame or we all feel ashamed in some way because we all feel like, oh, I'm not writing enough or my writing isn't as good as this person's. So maybe that's like what makes it so effective is we just all are really into the idea of shame. Well, it just really is like very synergistic with Asian culture. Yes, right? very. <laughs> We're also trying to grow out of that, but you yeah, know, whatever I, works. Yeah. Whatever it, works for you. You know, it's whatever, yeah, whatever it. gets the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome. I love that. You know, you're doing that, and now you have this book, mm -hmm. and it's the beginning of a series, so there's yes. more to come. And um, do you have any tips or, like, piece of pearls of wisdom <laughs> for aspiring writers out in the world who are sit just sitting on their <laughs> ideas or locking them away in their computers right. where no one ever sees them? Well, first of all, I would say, um, kind of touching on something we talked about before, to not get so wrapped up in it being perfect because mm -hmm. first draft is never perfect. Mm -hmm. It's usually very far from perfect. And um, I think that, I know for me, something that was paralyzing when I started writing creatively was the idea that it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that stops a lot of people from making forward motion. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I would say is, you know, Yes, right, like listening to writing advice is good, but it, in the end, it's just what works for you, and that's different for everyone. There's no right way to do it, mm -hmm. uh, which is another thing I feel like as Asians, we have to like struggle to let go of it. <laughs> there's yeah, not like a right yeah. way to do something. Formulas, they don't exist. Yeah, in there's, not, there's not a set of rules that yeah. you can use. Um, and then the last thing would just be, um, you know, when I was writing this book, I got the usual, um, this is not very commercial, it is very niche, um, it has a limited audience, which I feel are all code words for it does not star a white person. And, you know, I, I feel like we're in the middle of a sea change. I feel like we're starting to move towards a world where that's not an acceptable way of thinking. Yeah. Um, I think everybody deserves to see themselves centered in stories, and I think so many people want to see themselves centered in stories that those audiences are out there and they're mm. hungry and they're ready to see themselves. Absolutely. And I also think that audiences who, who are not the center of this, they want to see other stories too. For like, sure. Just to say that they wouldn't welcome that. with I, I think that the story is great. The artwork is great. It's a very universal mm -hmm. uh, journey that a lot of people, men and women, all experience. Mm -hmm. So... I wish you the best of luck. I think it's going to be you. great. And congratulations Thank again. you so much. So catch Sarah Kuhn's book, Heroin Complex, which is out now. Mm -hmm. You can get a copy now, which I will be doing shortly. And we should have like a book club reunion or yeah, something. But, I would love that. And I want to, we'll, we'll be keeping up with you with your next mm -hmm. books in your series. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for Coffee Break today here with Sarah Kuhn. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye, guys. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out Coffee Break. Please subscribe to the Collaboration channel to get more Coffee Break interviews and also check out our Green Room Music series. You can also check out our website, collaboration.org, for updates on our live events, our blog, and our Collabcast podcast, which is also available on iTunes. Please follow us on social media at Collaboration. Their links are right below. Thanks so much for joining, and we'll see you next time.